Women affected by the increase in the state pension age are owed compensation and an apology from the government. That is the verdict of a long-awaited report into how those born in the 1950s were affected by their retirement age being bumped from 60 to 65 to bring it in line with men. Initial plans were to raise the threshold and to phase it out from 2010 to 2020, but the coalition government of 2010 decided to speed that up, so it was introduced by 2018 instead. Women against state pension inequality, known as the WASPy women, say they were unaware of the changes and therefore didn't receive their pension when they expected to. According to today's report, victims could get a payout of up to £2,950, despite some suffering financial losses of £40,000 or more. Joining me now in the studio, Talk TV's political correspondent, Alicia Fitzgerald. Good to see you, Alicia. And down the line, we're joined by Becky O'Connor, Head of Pensions and Interactive Investor, and Francis Coppola, a finance writer. Thank you all for joining me. Why don't we start with Alicia, just to set the scene. Um, so this is something... That, that many women found came as the most cataclysmic shock, isn't it? They, they had thought that they were retiring at the age of 60 and their pensions would kick in. They had planned sensibly living their lives to that moment, knowing that their funds would run that long if they were working that long. And then they were suddenly told that the goalposts had changed and they argued that they hadn't known it hadn't been properly communicated. Yeah, this is all part of the government really just trying to keep people in work really over a long space of time. I mean, our productivity is at a record low and the government have just needed some way to try and keep people working as long as possible. And this is something that they did to try and ensure that that happened. Now, the women are claiming that because of this, they are now owed a big sum of money. And an ombudsman has suggested to the Department of Work and Pensions that they give that money over pretty pro quickly. Mm -hmm. The government seemed to just be very, very firm on the fact that they don't feel like that is the case whatsoever. And they've pretty much rejected all calls for this money to be paid. So definitely a bit of an upset there between the two sides. And, and, and even as this Ombudsman report was being filed and made public, those who compiled it have already said, we're, we're saying this, this is what we recommend, and we don't think the government will deliver, which is the most extraordinary state of affairs, really, isn't it? It is, for sure. But, I mean, if you look at the broader kind of political landscape here, the government really have had this big push of keeping people in work for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. So if they now to turn around and just, you know, start giving money to, to lots of these women here who feel that they've been wronged, people will say, well, hang on, if you have the money to give to them, why don't you have the money to give to X, Y, Z, various other things at the moment? Obviously, the government say that they're very much strapped for cash at the moment, and there's lots of things really pulling at the purse strings. So I think if they did give the money out here, they would then open themselves up to a lot more questions about why they can't do that um, for other sectors too. All right, let's bring Becky O'Connor into the conversation, Head of Pensions at Interactive Investor. Becky, from your perspective, how have you watched this story unfold? and what do you think are the crucial elements here? Well, as we know, the women, the campaign group has been going for many years. Um, the Ombudsman has been looking at this for many years. So this is a culmination of a huge amount of work. Um, now, in terms of the transition for these women um, and whether or not it's fair um, that the, the, they have suffered um, and uh, whether or not the compensation is now fair, it is still being debated. And yet we do now have a decision finally from the Ombudsman, something to work towards. Now, certainly there's a huge amount of strength of feeling from both the campaign group, but also the families of people affected. Um, some women have been affected more than others. And I think that the, you know, what we have now is a judgment that recognizes exactly what went wrong, when it went wrong, after having looked through all the evidence, trying to make a, a dispassionate decision when there is so much strength of feeling out there. And I'm really pleased with the results. Right. What does it say did go wrong and when did it go wrong? What does the report pinpoint as the crucial thing that you have said is the is the most interesting and most important factor of the report? What what went wrong and when? So what it says is that there weren't widespread failings all along from the point at which the legislation changed, which is 1995, to the point um, at which the, the age change, which was from 2010 onwards. But it does pinpoint a moment in time around 2005 when the DWP was not communicating the right things at the right time to the right people. So the report says there was a failure to give accurate, adequate and timely information that 
prove to these women that they may have been hearing things on the radio, they may have seen campaigns, but that what they said was there was a gap between awareness and understanding, and that could have been closed if the communication had been better, if letters had been sent personally around that time to those who were going to be affected, outlining exactly how they were going to be affected. And that didn't happen at this specific moment in time, and this is where the compensation has been judged to be payable. So how, how does the report find that these women were communicated with, if they were communicated with? So if they didn't receive individual personal letters saying, Dear Miss Smith, you think that you're going to get your pension at this date, but you're not. You're not going to get it till five, almost six years later. So it's very important, absolutely imperative, that you make other plans and think about what you're going to do and how you're going to survive for those six years. If if they didn't get those letters, what did they get? How has the DWP been able to argue all, the, all these years that it did inform them? So what the DWP did do was um, issued leaflets. Um, there was lots on the news. There were radio and TV notifications. There was information on the website. And I think the hope was that over the years, this information would filter through. And it, it, you know, it was um, over several years. Um, but from the DWP's own evidence, from surveys, um, it could see that the, the message wasn't necessarily getting through to the target audience. And so women weren't able to make adequate plans. And it does take an awful long time to plan properly for retirement, particularly if you have to play catch up, yeah. um, you know, on, based on years where you weren't paying in enough because you were assuming your state pension age was 60 rather than 65. So it, it did do this sort of widespread mainstream efforts um, through the press and through leafleting and so on. But what has been found is that it didn't make the specific communications that would have potentially made a difference to the affected individuals. When you said just now, Becky, that the DWP could see that the message wasn't getting through, how could the DWP see that? And could they and should they have done something to rectify it if they were aware that it wasn't permeating in the way that they hoped it would? So surveys were conducted to test the awareness of this group of women, 3.8 million approximately, um, to see if they had... Um, understood the implications of um, the communications that were going out but not necessarily directly to them and those surveys did apparently um, not uh, demonstrate good awareness among that population. Let me bring Francis Coppola into this, a finance writer. Have you written much about this Francis? I think I, it's dominated my life for a long time. I've written a lot about this over the years and, um, and experienced a fair amount of abuse because my position from the start was that I didn't think that um, the legislation itself was wrong and I didn't think women should be compensated for the loss of their pensions. Uh -huh. But I do, but what this is about, what the, the Ombudsman has found, is not that the legislation itself was wrong, not that there's a case for compensating women for the loss of their pensions, but there is a case for some mishandling of the communication um, by the DWP and some compensation for that. So the compensation that's being offered is very, very much lower than many women believe they should receive. Let, let me ask you why your standpoint the whole time when you say this has dominated your life for years has been women don't deserve compensation and there's nothing wrong with the legislation. Why did you, why did you decide that was your point of view? Well, the first thing was that this legislation was passed in 1995 and the announcement was made in the budget in 1993. Mm. Now, Parliament has the right to set pension ages and it can change them. People have this idea that your state pension aid at the time, that many of these women seem to have had this idea that they were told when they started work at 17 or something that their pen state pension age would be 60 and that would never change. But that mm. was never the case. And in fact, I remember going back to my sixth form in the 1970s that once the Equal Pay Act had been passed uh, and the Sex Discrimination Act, that we knew that state pension ages had to be equalised. It was only a question of when and at what age. Now, lots of us thought it would be at 63, so men's would come down a bit, women's go up a bit. But then in 1965, the Chancellor decided to equalise them at 65, and he had every right to do that. They made a 15-year delay to ensure that older women weren't affected and then did a 10-year gradual introduction which affected particularly women over the birth years 1950 to 55. That was accelerated in, 19, in 2011 and I actually think the acceleration was unfair 
but it's not the acceleration that's been criticised by the ombudsman. It's actually the way the original increase was communicated from 2005 onwards. Well, I've been discussing this on, on the radio, first of all, at the BBC, now here for years and years. And each time, the women affected, uh, Francis, have argued that they weren't told, they didn't know, they were not party to any of the different forums at which this news was revealed. They just didn't know. And that if they had known, being highly responsible, extremely bright, you know, perfectly competent people, they would have um, allowed for it and prepared for it and they would have, you know, known what was happening and they would have led, led their lives accordingly. But they didn't know, they didn't realise. And each time the women said this more and more vocally in a more kind of organised collective way with better people representing them, you know, more different podia all over the place. The DWP said, yes, you did know. Yes, we told you. Yes, you were in full, fully in command of the facts. No, this isn't true. Yes, you're bleating about something that is entirely your own fault. Am I exaggerating or is that really what's been going on for the last... I don't know, 20 years. That is years. pretty much what's been going on, yes, yeah. absolutely. And so now, uh, do you think these women are, are vindicated? Because now this the Ombudsman's report has said, actually, they didn't know. They never did wake up in the morning and get a letter saying, Mrs Bloggs, you're not going to get your pension till you're 65. That didn't happen. And it is possible not to realise that an item on the news pertains to you or not to have been watching the news that day or not to have been aware that there was some really relevant story because nobody told you. And in pre-social media days, it was easy, wasn't it, to, 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 to kind of find that the news kind of happened somewhere over there without your ever thinking you were really a part of it, or at least I, I think it was. If I can say, I'm actually one of the women affected. Right. Um, and I knew, um, and I know many other women who knew. Mm -hmm. And actually, the, DW, the uh, Ombudsman's report does say there are women who knew. Yes. Um, the problem was the women who didn't know. Well, I suppose um, you were a finance it, writer. You should have known. I mean, you would I have wasn't known it's your at the job. Time. You weren't. I wasn't at the time. No, right. I wasn't. How did you um, find so out then? How do you? How I did found you come out back? because I. I found out because it was actually reported on BBC uh, BBC Radio's Women's Hour. Right, um, right. I made it at the time and I was listening to Women's that Hour. Could it could have been that you were having a sandwich in the other room and you were doing the ironing or having a marvellous time in the exactly. theatre and you didn't know, so, couldn't it? Look, yeah. I guess the finding of the Ombudsman is the DWP could have done better in communicating this. And in particular, once it discovered in 2004 that um, lots of women didn't really know I either didn't know that it was going up at all or didn't know by how much, mm -hmm. um, that it could have done a lot better and it should have done. And that's the finding of the Ombudsman. The Ombudsman's not finding that the actual rise was wrong. It's saying the way it was communicated was not yeah. good enough. And, Becky, let, and let me talk to you, Becky, for a minute about women and pensions in general, because certainly many women have been... It's not, I don't want to say felt that they were. I'm going to say they were. They were ill-used by the pension structure because of having to take time off to have children and care for their children and the way in which it was all fudged together so that it meant that you'd missed out on years of paying in, but actually men didn't miss out in the same way, even though they were the fathers of the children and it wasn't really at all fair or equal. So this bringing it into some kind of equality and making everybody 65 is only OK if men are equally penalised for taking time off paying their pensions, uh, paying their, their contributions, because they're also uh, fathers of children. Not, and it's not just the mothers who are missing out. So are you often dealing with women who, who have got these sparse, gappy-looking pensions with bits missing and therefore what they get at the end isn't what it ought to be? Sadly, yes. And if I may say that the situation isn't historic, it's ongoing. Because exactly. we still have a situation where paternity leave isn't paid at the same rate as maternity leave. Women tend to get more when they take time off from their employers and therefore they tend to spend more time off. And so, mm. the, you know, we may have equality in terms of the state pension age now, but we don't really have that equality yet in the workplace, which was one of the justifications um, supposedly for the um, equality of the state pension age. So it's still a problem. There's a 35% official gender pension gap. Yeah. Um, to give you an idea, most men retire with well over £100,000 and most women well below. Um, the, the, the gap is 35%, 38%. So it, it's significant. It's not 
narrowing very quickly. Women are increasing their contributions. We can see that with our own customer base to try and make up for their own personal gender pension gap. But while we still have this situation, while that women are taking more time out to care for children, taking longer periods out of work, we don't have that equality even within private pensions. And, and is there any advice, Becky, that you can give women who find themselves in this position or might not yet be in this position but better look to it to make sure they're not going to be? You know, are there things that women can do to keep abreast, keep in control and make sure they know what's going on a bit better? So one thing that women who are taking time out of work can do is make sure they're claiming national insurance credits if they're caring for children. This is really important. It means that you still get the same entitlement to the state pension that you would have had had you been working. Mm -hmm. It's a recognition that that time out is still valuable. Um, otherwise, in terms of paying into personal pensions or workplace pensions, you can still pay into them up to £3,600 a year if you aren't working and aren't earning. You could also ask partners to pay into your pension for you. Um, besides that, you know, making hay while the sun shines when you are in work and you are able to increase your contributions to try and keep up um, with your own kind of goals for retirement and make sure that you're not missing out as a result of having taken time out to care for children.